Well, hello and welcome to the Footy Accumulators betting show with me, Will Perry, Alan McAnally and James Vickers. Uh, I had a big winner on the Champions League last week, so I've ditched Manchester for Mallorca, but I've managed uh, <laughs> not ditch these two as well. I'm not talking to the Chuckle Brothers, actually, because they absolutely pied me off uh, about my suggestion for Sterling. <laughs> goal scorers in the, the second leg of the, the round of 16 in the Champions League. We would have got beautiful odds on the double on that, but they weren't having it. What have you boys got to say for yourself? I blame Kevin De Bruyne, personally. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with Alan on that. I'm also fuming. By the way, I'm fuming with Varane. What about him? Yeah. What, what's he giving it? Oh, my goodness me. By the way, can I just say... What's a great result for City as well, Will? I know you're delighted, but that was that was exactly what we thought they would do. I thought they looked really good. And uh, even when they conceded the goal, I, I didn't see any any panic from them. I thought they were very good, City. Yeah. Look, I, I tell you what, it's getting interesting now, James, isn't it? Because we mentioned this a few weeks ago, but the fact that we now know our quarter-finalists in the Champions League, it's all going to be played within one stadium in Lisbon, it's like we've got a sort of summer World Cup on our hands, isn't it? But just one-off knockout games in the last eight of a competition like this. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's especially with the time of year that it's been played. It's kind of replaced the Euros for me a bit now. So it's going to be great to see one-legged knockout football. Really looking forward to some of the games over the next few days as well. The the Atalanta PSG game for me, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I'm saying to you guys off air, if Atalanta could get what well, do PSG in that game, the amount of goals they've scored this season, I think they're on. 98 in all competitions this season, which for a team that were finishing mid-table in Serie A is absolutely fantastic going. But yeah, you just look at the ties, Bayern, Barca, City, Leon's going to be some cracking games coming up. And we lost some heavyweights, Al, haven't we as well? I mean, when you look at the quarter-final lineup, really interesting ties in Atalanta against PSG, as James mentioned, RB Leipzig against Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, obviously is a big one, and Manchester City against Lyon. But to have, you know, Lyon... Atalanta and Leipzig in there without the likes of Real Madrid and Juventus. It makes mm. it spicy, makes it tasty. Well, Luce, it makes it, it, it makes it, I think, what James is spot on with. These one-off games mean that they're not out. They're not out. You know, mm. you, you, I would imagine there'd be a couple of people who think, Leon managed to get through and beat Juve. One-off games? What price are they to win it? You know, is their name on the cup kind of thing? But yeah, I think the fact that these one-off games means that everybody's out. I think it's a really... Leipzig and Madrid, I don't know, it's genuinely a toss of the coin. They're both pretty good. They're both, they're both good teams going forward. I don't know whether because I think that because Simone uh, is the manager, they'll be tighter at the back than what Leipzig with. And, and, and I think you're right. I think Atlanta PSG, although everybody knows already, I've had a sneaky 50 ages and ages ago on PSG to win it. I'm hoping that they turn them over. But this makes things a much more level playing field. And the huge game, obviously... Um, is Bayern Barca I, I cannot wait for that I genuinely can't wait yeah and, and I guess look, if you're an RB Leipzig fan you're thinking I would have quite fancied this this Champions League tie against Atletico what just before the lockdown but they, they, they weren't in the greatest mm. form were they towards the end and obviously having lost their main weapon in, in Timo Werner to Chelsea as well right boys let's let's try and pick an acker uh, as we always try in vertical mm. and do every week look I think a lot of punters would have followed what we did last week so for the last 16 second legs, we went Juve, City and Barca. Um, and obviously, you know, Leon surprising everyone by knocking out Ronaldo's boys. Maurizio Sarri getting the sack. And, you know, you win the Serie A title, Al. A couple of weeks mm. later, you're out the door and Pirlo's in your seat. That's, he'll be smarting with that, uh, Sarri. Because, tip I mean, listen, if Juve, I mean, they had so many chances, didn't they? Obviously, to win the game, couldn't manage to do it. And unfortunately, the manager... Um, to, 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 has to has to hold up his head and say, yeah, we, we got put in the Champions League. And remember, probably they expected to win the domestic league. So the Champions League is one where the hierarchy are thinking, yeah, we've got a really good chance this year. And all of a sudden, you're not in the competition. So we know what Italy's like. We know what Spain's like something. They're like, OK, change everything. We're not happy. So he's a little unlucky, Sarri, I think, considering, like you already said, well, correctly, that they won the Scudetto. And now, all of a sudden, they're out of the Champions League and he loses his job. Um I don't know. I don't know whether I think they would have won it anyway. I mean, Ronaldo's sensational, brilliant, but um, he's probably going to be. I don't think it better work too long, sorry, but he'll be pretty. He'll be pretty angry about it. Yeah. So I fancy. I don't know what you boys think. I think we should. We can't. We can't just go for a treble, can we? We've got to go for all four games in our yeah. week. I I fancy, and tell me if you don't like it. I fancy PSG 
to beat Atalanta, even though I know James is thinking that the Italians might get one over the French champions. I fancy PSG, Atletico, Bayern and Manchester City. What do you think about that, James? Yeah, I like that. I think the, the Atalanta PSG game, um, obviously PSG with the attacking talent that they've got will probably just shade it. I think it will be a very good game though and probably out of the four, the underrated game that probably will deliver the most. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy going with PSG. Atletico against Leipzig, I think if Timo Werner was still there, I'd give Leipzig more of a chance. They are still a very good team without him, but they relied so heavily on his goals and his attacking movement yeah. in the Bundesliga since the restart that be more inclined to go with Atletico. Uh, as Alan said, with Simeone, he seems to get it right in the big games for them. Just look at what he did to Liverpool at Anfield just before the lockdown, and, and you know you can't look too far past them. Bayern, I've said, I've gone on record saying I think they'll win the whole thing, and obviously City looked brilliant against Madrid uh, the other day. So yeah, I'd be absolutely fine going with that four. Mm. Do you think the do you think the, the closure of the French league? I mean, I suppose this is a stupid question if you know what I mean. Sorry, guys. Because Leon, I've just put out UV of the Champions League, and that's the second game since they cancelled the French League. Yeah. They played, they played the cup final against PSG, lost on pens, finished nil nil, turn out, get beaten the game, granted, but score and, and qualified. So they now play City, who's played all their games, and uh, and PSG haven't played apart from that game, and play At Atalanta, who's finished their season, James. Yeah, I was I was expecting the Bayern Chelsea game, for example. There was I saw Chelsea fans on Twitter saying that they were gonna they were gonna win that game because Bayern hadn't played in sort of three or four weeks, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. You know, they've had a chance to recharge, but yeah, Leon, even though they got beat, they defended well, uh, went through against Juventus. So I think obviously the French teams you can't discount them. They've had you know a good period to rest. PSG, for example, not played in a couple of weeks since that cup final. Mbappe went off injured, so will he be fit if he's had a few weeks to rest? Not sure. Um, but yeah, I think definitely it'll benefit the French sides rather than hindering them having that rest and coming into this tournament, um, you know, fresh for, for knockout football. Yeah. Well, 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 you're good at these. What was the four teams you said? Well, I thought, I thought PSG, even though I, th yeah. I, I do agree with James, I think that's going to be a really interesting game. But I think PSG yeah. might edge that one. Atletico to beat yeah. RB Leipzig. Uh, yeah. Bayern Munich to beat Barcelona and, yeah. uh, and City to, to, to get the, uh, the better of Lyon. Love it. Yeah, we're having that. Uh, look, well, you, you tell us, Al, just quickly then, what would that be like mm. for, for a player to, to essentially, you know, a lot of them wouldn't even play 90 minutes in that game, but to have played, you know, an hour under your belt and yeah. then suddenly be involved in a Champions League last eight game against a team who've, who've finished their season and they've had, you know, a full kind of three months of competitive football. Well, the fact that you, you knew you were still in the competition, so in the back of your mind, most of the time, obviously training hasn't been as intense but your the adrenaline of playing in the competition and being back at it again is, is probably going to take you through, and that's probably what helped Leon when they were under the cosh a little bit against Juve. Um, I think it'll be a lot, it'll be a lot more of a chess game than you think. I don't think MD will dominate games particularly, and I do think the fact that the players are now back at it, and I'm I'm really talking about the French lads. Um, I, I don't think there'll be much in the games. The fact that it's just one off. Is is intriguing. You know, we're, we're normally used to home and away. Uh, we're almost back to where I played in the Champions League or the old European Cup at the time, obviously, which was only home and away. There was no league set up to get you into the quarters, etc., etc., or, or last 16. So it'll, I think the players will be absolutely bouncing for this, Will. Fitness mm. might come in sort of towards the end of the match, but in the first half or the first hour, it's going to be like everybody's been at it for a bit, to be honest. But I do think there's a genuine advantage for Bayern, for um, uh, um, Atletico Madrid, etc., cetera, yeah. etc., cetera, that have had managed or that have managed rather to fulfil their season and finish the whole shooting match, rather than uh, obviously Leon and PSG. Yeah, well, look, I mean, when you when you look at odds, uh, isn't it crazy that a game between Barcelona and Bayern Munich, which should be an absolute cracker, given how good that Barcelona were at times uh, in, in their win uh, in the Champions League in the last sixteen over Napoli, but Bayern going into this evens against against the Barcelona team who are, who are 12 to 5. Barcelona 12 to 5 for the win. Manchester City 5 to 18. These are the odds with Manchin bet. Atalanta uh, to beat PSG, which we, 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 you know, we're not discounting, are we? 12 to mm. 5 is worth a little shout on that one, but you can see on the screen now the odds for our Aka for this week uh, for the wins. <laughs> PSG, Atletico, Bayern and Manchester City. Okay, let's talk about the first goal scorers. Um, look, 
I, I probably about the time to repeat it, you know, I, I, I stuck <laughs> it that group and sent it out to you. And I didn't get a response for my Lewandowski and Sterling shout. They just, you know, James just said, oh, no, we'll have, we'll have Kevin De Bruyne. This week, Boink. Boink. <laughs> are we going to have a repeat of Sterling and Lewandowski? We're going to pick the first goal scorers in the games between Barca and Bayern Munich, which is a fascinating one to pick a first goal scorer in, and Manchester City against Lyon. With my pessimistic Manchester City hat on, and I do think we'll win the, win the game, I can see Lyon scoring first and City having to come from behind. I'm just visualising. I'm just trying to think, oh, what kind of game do you think this is going to be? You know, Lyon... They can defend well. They can dig in and frustrate City, can't they? Yeah, and I thought the <coughs> Kakare, Guimaraes and uh, Aouar, I thought they were very good in the middle of the park, helping that defence that they have. Um, I shouldn't really tell you this, but I've already had a bet on Leon to score first and City to win. I do think City will win the game, by the way. Mm. But um, I do think that, look, City are going to have the ball. Mm. Leon are going to use, try and use pace and try and hit them quickly on the counter-attack. Um, and I think if they can manage to score first, then obviously they'll frustrate the life out of City. But um, I, I, I do think City will win. I'm, I'm, I've got to sit with that because every time I've seen City, they've been absolutely fantastic, to be honest. But um, that means I think that Depay might get a goal or who else they got up top with them? Um, Tussar or, uh, I mean, I don't know, Rudy Garcia, I'd be, he'd probably right now picking numbers at a hat that he thinks he can maybe, yeah. s- maybe sneak a goal before City go and turn them over. But um, I'm, listen, there's no point in asking me. I never get the first goal scorers right. I mean, I was, okay, <laughs> Lewandowski was good. Jesus let me down, although he did score. And I like Jesus because he's always in the box and City yeah. are always making chances. What about that then, James? Should we, should we go for Jesus this week? I, I was quite keen just looking at it for, for a repeat. But, you know, what, what, the, what the chances of that Lewandowski and Sterling happening again? Should, should we go for a Jesus... Six yard tap in. If we can get, what about odds on a six yard tap in as well inside the six yard box? <laughs> it won't um, be any further than that, James, will it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like the look of that. I'm, uh, I'm inclined to go with you this week, Will, after uh, sort of seeing you pick the winner, so to speak, and then uh, <laughs> just summing it up in uh, abroad at the moment. So I'm looking to follow suit and hopefully uh, a little bit of a winner and uh, maybe I can jet off to somewhere. But yeah, I think uh, Jesus, good odds for a first goal scorer. You mentioned Leon, sort of potentially getting one, uh, you know, the speed that they're up front in the likes of Dembele, it can be. Um, Depay, we've mentioned, wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but I think City will be too sort of savvy on the day for them. And I, I yeah. can't see Pep letting, uh, letting Leon score first. So, yeah, I'd be happy to go with Jesus uh, to get the first goal in that game. And look, we say Lewandowski in the other game, Al, and, and we always say Lewandowski. It's a very obvious one to pick, isn't it? But the, the guy yeah. is an absolute freak. And when, when you look at records and, and what could tumble this this season and, and in egos of players like Lewandowski and Ronaldo. Lewandowski now 13 goals in seven Champions League games uh, this season. He's only four behind Cristiano Ronaldo's um, haul of, of uh, 17 in one season. That was Real Madrid, wasn't it? 2013-14. Wow. That, it, in the way that Bayern have been going, it is an achievable record that could tumble. Well, I was sitting back having a little glass of something and I looked at the clock and I think it said 72 minutes and Bayern were like, let's get another goal. Mm. Let's absolutely murder this Chelsea team and remind them this is the level that they have to be at. And they kept going, they kept going. Then the ball comes in the box. Who's heading it in? Lewandowski. Mm. I mean, he is absolutely unbelievable. You're right. And they are relentless, by the way, because they don't play any other way, Bayern. They look to score five goals. If you get two, congratulations, we've got five. He has a big opportunity to get that record that you were talking about, Will. And it's very difficult. Listen, they have lots of goal scorers on their team, uh, Bayern, for sure. But he is the tallies man. And if he can, if, if there's someone in the box that can't score, they're looking for Lewandowski. That's how he should be favourite to score the first goal, to be honest. Um, it is Barcelona they're playing, after all. And Messi had a go at his teammates, didn't he? As though they weren't particularly... Not pulling their weight is the wrong way, but maybe he thinks that the Barcelona hierarchy could do with freshening everything up a little bit to help him because he can't do it on his own, Messi. Yeah. But he is capable. We know that for sure. But to take Lewandowski not as a first goal scorer, yeah, I don't know. I think you take an awful big chance because he is lightningly quick and he's got his shooting boots on for sure. Yeah, and a reminder that uh, Manchin Bet have got an offer on right now uh, called First Covers Last, which means you get your stake back if you get your first scorer uh, bet wrong when your chosen player 
uh, scored last instead of first. So a reminder then of our first goal scorer Jesus. this week. Jesus, yeah. the night there. Yeah, yes, you, you were covered. You had your back covered, Matt. I was like, I like thank it. goodness for that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go in the games between Barca and Bayern and Manchester City against Lyon. We're going to go first goal scorers, Gabriel Jesus and Robert Lewandowski. Um, I want to talk to you two about the, the talk of the town this week, certainly the talk of the town where I am, because there's a lot of Real Madrid fans here in Mallorca um, who still follow Cristiano Ronaldo's um, career very closely. But Ronaldo, from Juventus to PSG, I mean, it was a crazy fee, wasn't it, James, when he, when he left Spain to go to Italy in the first place for, what was it, 99 million quid or something mental like that. Still has two seasons left on his contract, 35 years old. Clearly frustrated to be out of the Champions League. I don't think him and Richard Sarri really saw eye to eye, did they? But could you see that happening, James? Cristiano Ronaldo at the age of 35 making another ridiculous transfer fee move to, to PSG? On the money side of it, yes, I can see it happening. Obviously, PSG, you know, it's no secret the amount of money that they have. I think at the moment, obviously, you mentioned Ronaldo went for sort of 9,900 million. What would he be worth now? A couple of years on, I'd say probably. 60 70 still just for the which goals is crazy the which is crazy for someone that age isn't it, it yeah exactly he, for for the age he is the goals he's going to guarantee he's still going to command a, a big price i think do psg need him i wouldn't say domestically no they don't need him uh, champions league i think psg's problem in the champions league it's not scoring goals it's, it's that mentality of keeping teams out at the other end so i think that money could be used better in defensive areas I think mm. for Ronaldo to go get one last big payday not that he needs it by any stretch of the imagination you know he probably wants to do that and prove he can do it in another league so the signs of why it makes sense I just unless Neymar leaves PSG or Mbappe leaves PSG I just can't see them going in for him to, to be able for Tuchel to keep you know all those players happy at the same time is you know one hell of a job so I can't see it happening from that side but there are sort of things I can see when you put two and two together that would make a lot of sense for it. But if I was to put a bet on, I'd say you'd probably stay at Juventus. Yeah. Well, what's his motivation then, Al, at the age of 35? It's worth keep reminding people how old he is because he looks about 25 still and he, he yeah. seems to be the, the Benjamin Button of, of European football, doesn't he? He's getting younger and younger. Uh, 28 goals across all competitions in his debut season at, at uh, Juventus and he weighed in with a, an unbelievable 37 this season and, and, and counting in all comps. And actually last season, 28, I think it was 31 in all competitions, was, was his worst for a long time because he was around the 50s and 60s <laughs> if you include the goals in Portugal as well. But is, is it a pure ego thing that he wants to be able to go, look, I won the Champions League in this country, this country, this country. What's in his mind now, Ronaldo? Yeah, I wish I wish I could read into his mind too. I think first and foremost, well, he loves to win, he loves to score goals. So that's the reason why he's 35 and he's still playing at the top level of football. Uh, his fitness levels look incredible. I think he's a vain enough lad that he likes to put on his pictures of his, his abs still and he looks a million dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think that his drive is to win as much as he can possibly win and prove to everybody that he's done it everywhere he's been. Mm. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, there is, of course, another part of Ronaldo, which is the travelling circus that comes behind him and everything that brings with him. And I think that would be something that PSG would be genuinely interested in. Seriously. If you are, if, if us three were involved with PSG, would we want Ronaldo? I would, genuinely. Mm. If I could get Ronaldo in my team, I would. I don't know where the Neymar... Ronaldo partnership would work. I don't know whether the egos are just too big for that. Uh, be number one. And they have the best striker, in my opinion, out with Lewandowski and Mbappe, who will be the next superstar by 100%. Yeah. So it's going to be difficult. I suppose 35 years old, and James is right, does he need another payday? Of course he doesn't. But would I take him? I'd take him in a heartbeat because it's just so good, man. And I think, I think you bang on, uh, Al, isn't he, James? When you talk about would, would PSG want him and, and, and that entourage and the travelling circus, that, as Al put it, they would want that circus and, and more, wouldn't they? QSI have always wanted, they made no secret about wanting to sign Ronaldo because you, you stick Ronaldo seven on the back of a PSG shirt, you're sorted only for the next 10 years financially. 
Oh, absolutely. I remember when he signed for Real Madrid, I think it was something crazy, like he paid for himself in shirt sales within the first couple of months, which is, you know, absolutely ridiculous for the money they paid at the time. And PSG shirts in particular, because they have sort of the Air Jordan logo on, are quite popular anyway, sort of in, in fashion. So you got Ronaldo on the back of that, and they're going to absolutely fly out. I think as well, which we should touch on, is, is PSG's sort of desire to win the Champions League. And if you get Ronaldo in, who's absolutely obsessed with winning it, he puts two and two together. And, you know, I can see why PSG would want it. Um, just, yeah, as Alan said, I just can't see how they'd keep, you know, Neymar, Ronaldo, all of them happy in the uh, sort of the, the season and game time that they'd all want. Yeah. So essentially, in a word from all of us, or a thumbs down, happening or, ha- yeah. or not happening in this one? No. Ah. I'd like, like to see about it, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right, guys, want to also talk about uh, Alexander Lacazette. Big uh, transfer news brewing, isn't there, at the Emirates? Is Lacazette going to leave Arsenal and join Atletico Madrid for, for £30 million? Um, a lot of the English media reporting that uh, that Lacazette w- would go to Atletico if Pierre Emerick Aubameyang signs a new contract at Arsenal. Um, what have we made of, of Lacazette out at his time in, in the Prem? Did we expect more from him when he arrived? Let's not forget 2017 from Lyon. I think it was about 46 million quid. And when we look back well, now, three years, 48 goals in, in three years. Well, what have we made of Lacazette's time at Arsenal? Uh, lack of threat, <laughs> I think I'm going to call him. Um, <laughs> When he arrived, I, I was like, oh, I like this. This boy's relatively good. and Well, not relatively. That's a stupid thing to say. Good player. A lot of money. Probably for the three years at Arsenal. Hasn't been good enough. There's two things I want to say generally about him. He's obviously a good player, but he's not good enough. If he mm. thinks he's going to be the main man in front of Obama Yang, he's, he's delirious. I can't believe Atletico Madrid are interested in him. And if Arsenal get £30 million from anybody, sell him. Because I'm just not having him now. He, he looks another player as though he's got the world in his shoulders. He's playing for Arsenal Football Club. What a football club that is. Mm-hmm. But everything seems to be heavy on him as though he does want to be the number one man. But if he's not going to be the number one man, then you need to do what Ronaldo does or what Messi does or what Lewandowski does, mm-hmm. which is carry the team. And, and when you're going through hard times, show up and, I don't know, make a tackle, have a shot on target. Cross the ball into the box for somebody else. I don't see enough from that from Lacazette. He's an obviously very good football player, but at the moment in time, he looks miles away from A, what he wants to be, and B, what Arsenal hoped he would be. Yeah, and, and James, he doesn't really strike me as a, as a Diego Simeone type of striker. When you look at you know, the obvious one to pick in, in Diego Costa, he, he's not that, that aggressive number nine who's going to hold up play and so on. He, you know... It's, it's, you sort of question it from Atletico's side, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I was sort of, before we came on, just looking at Lacazette's sort of stats for this season because when he came, I was really sort of excited to see him and Aubameyang playing together. I think most Arsenal fans were. And this season, 10 goals and four assists for, you know, a guy that you paid 46 million for isn't good enough. But what was sort of surprising for me, the Chelsea game in the FA Cup final, his average position, he's deeper than Maitland-Niles, who's playing left wing back, which for a centre forward, your number nine is, is you know, criminal in a, a cup final game. He's had half the amounts of shots that Aubameyang's had this season. So he's, he's not helping himself by getting into goal scoring areas either. So he seems to be obviously not to the same effect, trying to play that Bobby Firmino type role where he's coming deeper. Is that down to a lack of confidence and, and not getting in the box or has he been asked to do that? I'm not sure. But yeah, he does. How old does he, James? 29. Sorry, mate, how old is he? 29. 29. Mm. Yeah, he just doesn't strike me as a, a Simeone kind of sign in that, that sort of battering ram who's going to make it hard, press like Diego Costa does, Morata does to some extent as well. So it'd give him another option up front if they can get him scoring goals. Um, I think out of the three of them, from what I saw in his time at Leon, he's probably the best finisher when he's on his day. Um, yeah. But I don't think he'd suit the way that Atletico Madrid pay. So if they are going to be paying a lot of money for him, it's a, it's a bit of a gamble considering they've got players like Costa and Morata already. I, I, t- I, t- I tell you something, Will. <clears throat> you just said they're talking about £30 million. That tells mm. you exactly how he's done at Arsenal. You know what I mean? If he's an absolute top striker and, and Atletico Madrid are dying to get him to come to the football club, <clears throat> he's going to cost a lot more than £30 million. Yeah. So in terms of, of business for Atletico Madrid, if they've seen something in him that Simeone thinks... I'll shake him into shape, then 30 million could be a steal if he goes and scores 25 goals the first season. I just, I, I just doubt it a little. 
And I'm with you. I don't see him as an Atletico Madrid player. Never mind somebody that Simeone would would pin even thirty million on, thinking he can take him from Arsenal because I'll make him better. Yeah, and and reportedly, James, you know, he's not happy, Lacazette, with all of Arteta's focus being on Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and a lot obviously of this depends on whether he signs a new contract or not. But then also the people behind him on the periphery, who are on the periphery of, of the first team, the likes of. Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Martinelli. I mean, those guys are getting shouts ahead of Lacazette. And you'd imagine next season, Arteta's plans will be in those young guys and how he can, can really make them kick off. Definitely. I think, as Alan said, it was sort of nail on the head. If he, if he wants to be in that spotlight of Aubameyang, he needs to deliver more and score the goals. I, if I'm Lacazette and I'm sitting there seeing Aubameyang getting those headlines and being talked about, you know, with the praise that Arteta's given him, you know, it'd make me want to go out and score more goals, not sit there and moan about it so I can't really see sort of that argument from his side 30 million though when you've got the likes of as you mentioned Enketia and Martinelli coming for probably sort of a decent amount of money for Arsenal I think it's no secret that they need to sell players this summer in, in order to bring players in so I think it may be best for both parties if he, if he did move on yeah. uh, but obviously a lot hinges on Aubameyang and will he stay and sign that new deal and, and Al, just finally on, on Lacazette, I don't think if you're an Arsenal fan, and maybe Arsenal fans might tell me otherwise, but I, I get the feeling if you're an Arsenal fan, you wouldn't really be too bothered to see the back of, of Lacazette, you know, big wage off the bill, uh, bringing through the likes of, as we said, in Ketty and Martinelli, and it frees up, doesn't it, um, Arteta to, to be able to go and pick someone else out of, out of Europe and try and do what Wenger did and pick a young, exciting, Anelka-style striker for the future of Arsenal. Bye. It's been a pleasure knowing you, Mr. Lacazette. But we'll take the 30 million, we'll buy a couple of defenders and goodbye from all the yeah. Arsenal fans. I don't think... I, listen, there'll be loads of Arsenal fans that really like him. There'll be, I think, more that are disappointed he hasn't made a big, bigger in, impact. Uh, I, I was so delighted, because I was going to call him Martinez when I apologise, but Martinelli, for me, excites the living daylights out of me. Mm. Much more than what Lacaz, Lacazette does. And I think... If you realistically think about it, and Ateta's been cute here, not been brilliant for us, who can we get the most money out of that's still a high-profile player? Then he comes under that remit, doesn't he, Alexander Lacazette? So I think if you can get any kind of money or over £30 million for him, I think most of the Arsenal fans would say, see you later. And if you are a member of, um, of Alexander Lacazette's legal team and you want to contact uh, Alan McAnally's lawyers for that lack of threat <laughs> comment, you know exactly where to find him. Listen, I'm here. Great to speak to you two again. Uh, remember, if you're looking for those additional stats and trends ahead of this week's Champions League, it's a really exciting week, isn't it? In the Champions League, go and download the Footy Accumulators Betting Hub app. Check out the Smart Hacker function. Remember, you've got to be 18 plus to bet. Please gamble responsibly. I'm off to go and put the, the budgie smugglers on, and we'll see you two and everyone watching <laughs> next week when we're going to be talking about, boys, the semi finals of the Champions League. Have a good one. <laughs>